Hey there guys, welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. This is Chetan here from Double Cube and welcome back to a brand new tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys to create a gaming header for YouTube banners and Twitter headers in Photoshop. Uh, it's been a long time since I made a tutorial like this, so you know I thought I'd make one to show you guys how to do it. showing you guys how to make it is by breaking down each and every single layer because it's gonna take a while to you know add in each and every uh, element and teach you guys so I'm gonna like break down everything so for now I'm gonna go ahead and just hide all the layers uh, like now and as you can see we have the document now the, the dimension settings if I go to the canvas size if I set this to pixels it's 1500 by 500 that is for Twitter headers and for YouTube, it's going to be 2560 by 1440. So if I go and choose canvas size 2560 uh, by 1440, uh, that's the dimensions you want for the Twitter header. Make sure it's on pixels, obviously. Uh, so that's for the YouTube header. For Twitter header, it's 1500 by, one, by 500. All right. So let's start off with the background, which is all this stuff. So I'm going to open up this group again and uh, let me just start off from fresh. All right, let me just hide everything. Oh, there we go. So the first thing you want to do is we want to go ahead and create these five, um, you know, I would say pieces. It's pretty simple how to create that. So you want to go and make sure you are on a new layer. Let me just show you for one. And uh, let's go ahead and create one like this. And uh, you can choose any color you want for the background. Uh, so for this, I'm just showing you guys red color and if you have your foreground color set to red uh, You can hold on alt and hit on delete and what that's going to do is that's going to go ahead and fill it up with red So as you can see over here, let me just press ctrl D to deselect I'm going to put this on top of everything so you guys can actually see it So you see it's a red layer. I'm going to press ctrl T and right click and choose uh, perspective um, skew actually not perspective and then you can click here on the center and then just move it over to the side and you're gonna get this angle right that's that's basically that we the angle we're getting and once you have that angle you can just make copies by pressing ctrl J and you can move them around all right so the next thing you want to do oops so once you have placed them you can add in a drop shadow so let me just show you the settings that I have used for the drop shadow so it's basically um, uh, 75 on the opacity and 30 for the size with uh, the distance set to zero. And since the distance set to zero, the angle does not matter. And if we have an inner glow, so a simple inner glow of 40% of the opacity, size set to five, you know, uh, that's the basic glow. So you want to place them in such a way. So the center one is obviously going to be on the top and then the left on the right is going to be below that. And then the last one on the outside are going to be like so. All right. Uh, Great. So once we have that, uh, you can see that we have this nice, th th these cloud effect over here. Now, this was actually an addition which I made, uh, but you don't have to do it. But if you guys want to know, all you got to do is create a new layer. Uh, I'm going to actually delete this layer. I'm going to show you on the top on this one, right? Right. So as you can see, we have this cloud layer. Okay, I'll, I already have one. So with this clouds layer that is there, um, you want to go and set it to overlay and uh, oops overlay and set the opacity to 15. now how do you get this clouds layer is pretty simple let me just hide this and create a new layer or uh, you can go to filter and choose uh what was that um render and choose clouds and that's going to create up this color but since i have my foreground color to red to black it is going to you know add a red and black color if i go ahead and set this to white and go to filter render clouds it's going to give me a black and white and then all i got to do is set the blending mode of this to overlay and kind of reduce down the opacity of this to like 15 percent and there we go we have our clouds layer pretty cool all right so the next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and get yourself an image let me just show you on this one okay uh this image that i have over here so it's just a simple plain image and i've set the blending mode of this to overlay if i set it to normal it's going to be like a proper image i'm going to set this to overlay and have the opacity set to 100 and make sure it is as a clipping mask so all you, how you how you want to create it is you want to go and uh, let me just show you 
Uh, so this is how it is going to be when you place it and you can right click and choose create clipping mask and that's going to clip it up for you and you can press ctrl t to scale it however you want uh, that's completely up to you and uh, yeah let's press ctrl t so you can scale it up however you want and then click on enter to deselect so the next one is we have a human saturation adjustment where i've set the saturation up to 100 and uh you know i've clicked on colorize okay and uh then if i just put this on create clipping mask for this as well so if i right click and choose create clipping mask it's going to apply that red color the, the blue color uh the hue is 208 only on this part of you know on the shape so that's the purpose of a clipping mask right good so that's basically how you want to go ahead and do for everything so you just want to duplicate the layers and just move them away and this is the dark prints this is the um i forgot the goblin shooter uh damn it i didn't forget what it was called uh, we have the archer and oh yeah dark goblin that's what it's called and the barbarian and there we go all right so once we have this you just want to go and group them into a layer by selecting everything and pressing ctrl g and good and then the next thing we have is that create a new layer on top of it so just create a new layer uh, which is going to be this layer and as you can see we have this nice uh simple black color um layer to give it a nice effect it's pretty simple how you want to do that so if i'm just going to hide it and show you guys so create a new layer and press b on your keyboard to get the brush tool which is this one and uh, make sure that you have a pretty big brush size so you can use the square bracket keys to make it big and small make sure your foreground is set to black and make sure that the hardness is set to zero and then all you want to do is just create a nice simple color like so right like so don't make it too harsh and uh, you can reduce down the opacity i've set it to 60 so you can just go ahead and reduce down the opacity of this to 60 percent and it adds in a nice effect make sure making sure that nothing is too darn bright all right i'm going to delete this layer and keep my original one looking good so the next one is we have uh, these particles over here so if I go and set, so these particles are one which I found on Google and just type in particle PNG and you get a bunch of uh, them. Now, if you have something that like looks like this, you can set the blending mode of this to screen and that's going to get rid of the black and, you know, uh, it's going to keep it, uh, you know, it's going to keep, uh, get rid of the black and keep only the white dots. All right. Uh, let me just control Z that. All right. So the next thing is we have this light. Uh, so it's basically a very bright light. So this one, if I show you the original one, it looks like this. It's a very strong bright light, which I found from Bearer Designs Lighting Pack. I think I'll put a link to that in the description so you guys can check it out. Uh, so it's it's a big pack. And set the blending mode of this to color dodge and, you know, just move it up in the right place. Um, right. And you can even reduce down the opacity of this to 60%, whatever you feel is the right brightness. So the next thing is adding our logo. So I'm going to add, this is the logo which I made and I've just added a simple drop shadow, uh, which is around 50 for the opacity, uh, five for the distance and size 30. Uh, obviously you can drag in and drop in any logo or even a text if you want, that's up to you. All right. So the next thing is we have uh, a vignette around the side. So as you can see here, it's, it becomes darker. It's pretty simple to create a vignette. Let me just show you that real quick. So create a new layer on top of everything. And uh, what you want to do is grab your elliptical marquee tool and come over here to the corner. Just hold down and just create a come over to this corner and you're going to create a selection like so. And then what you want to do is press Ctrl Shift I, which is going to inverse the selection. So now all this part is inverted or you can go to select and choose inverse. And uh, you want to go and right click and uh, fill this with black color so you can select the contents i want it to be the foreground color because i want black foreground color set to black and click on ok and press ctrl d to deselect and it's going to end up looking something like this now um, what you want to do is you want to go to filter blur and choose gaussian blur and you want to bump this up as much as you can uh you know like 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 as much as you can like i think probably like 160 click on ok and we can probably reduce down the opacity of this to like 70% uh, yeah, or maybe even let's say like 50%. That gives us this nice dark effect, making sure that nothing is too bright. All right, looks pretty good now. I'm gonna stick with the original one for now. Yeah, cause uh, I don't wanna screw this up. So the next one is the text. So I just created a new text uh, for the title and the font I'm using is called Renogare. So Renogare, that's the font, R-E-N-O-G-A-R-E. Can download that from dafon.com and i've added a simple layer style for this 
So a uh, simple inner glow with the opacity to 100, white color noise and the size of 2 and a gradient overlay from the blue color to a white color, I mean a light blue color and then a simple drop shadow uh, of opacity set to 80 and the size set to 30. Great. So once we have that, um, I actually used the color correction pack from Visual from Visual Arts a color correction pack. So uh, it's basically nothing, uh, uh, nothing too complicated. I meant. So we have a brightness and contrast layer where the brightness was set to minus thirty six and the contrast was set to sixty eight. And the other one is a curves adjustment where you know the uh, you know the brightness is brought down slightly to give more contrast. Uh, that's pretty much it for the lighting pack. Let me just close this up. Oh. We want to close it up. There we go. And uh, the next one is the uh, the text over here. So let's double click on the text. Uh, let's see what's inside. So it's basically a PNG image of the uh, social media icon. Double click on that. We're going to get uh, the blend color options. So I've just set the color overlay to one of the colors from the logo. I've just picked it up over here. Click on OK. And uh, the text is a plain white text and the plain, and the plain uh, blue cyan text. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now another thing you can do is to give it a final effect is this. So what you want to do is once you group everything, you want to make a copy by pressing Ctrl J and press Ctrl E to merge or you can actually go right click and choose uh, merge group. And once you have this, then you can actually see it kind of looks pretty bad with everything, all this unnecessary stuff. So to fix that is create a new layer. Okay, uh, let's actually not create a new layer. We don't need to create a layer. We're going to select the one which we just grouped and click on the uh, the rectangular marquee tool and just drag in a selection like so and make a copy by pressing Ctrl C and just press Ctrl V and paste it. And now that's going to go ahead and you can hide this layer and that's going to go ahead and just create the exact uh, 1500 by 1000 by 500 uh, dimension document uh, uh, image. So that's very handy. And uh, what you want to do is go ahead and select uh, the uh, rectangular tool, right? And uh, just create a selection like so. And then come here to select, modify, and choose a border. And probably set the border width to two or three pixels, not too much. I'm going to stick with uh, probably three pixels. And that's going to create this very nice border. If you see, it's creating a nice gap. And what you want to do is create a new layer and fill it up with white. Now since my background color is set to white, I'm going to hold down Ctrl and delete and press Ctrl D to deselect and that's going to create this nice background. And I'm going to go and uh, this border, sorry, not background. And I'm going to set the blending mode of this to overlay and I'm going to create this nice effect like an outline, which is pretty cool when you guys are doing it for presentations or even when you add it on your Twitter headers or YouTube channel art. So that's pretty much it on creating this Twitter header, guys, gaming Twitter header. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to mention in the comment sections down below. Don't uh, forget to give me a like if you did like the video. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.